Yeah, this was a follow-up video on the New Guinea quake. The devastation in there is still being documented. It, it, it's hard to get through to these inland remote villages. Many have been destroyed by huge and massive landslides following the 7.5 magnitude earthquake last week. The reason we're covering this is because it's really more about volcanism than it is about the earthquakes. And New Guinea, just like Indonesia, is one of the most strewn out, littered landscapes, littered with what? Littered with volcanoes. You can see New Guinea's close association with Indonesia. Indonesia, you see the Band Sea, is a huge subsidence super mega caldera. You can see earthquakes have been happening along there for years. And where? In the transition zone. That's the sloping portion of your caldera. That, that is where the most stress is imparted when there is huge uplift or subsidence. <clears throat> but what brought our attention to to New Guinea was Mount Cinnabung uh, blowing up. Uh, many people have seen that. We, we covered it about a week and a half later, not as breaking news, but as offering you a commentary and an analysis of what's going on globally. And uh, yeah, everybody's covered, you know, anytime there's an earthquake, somebody's got an app and they're going to be making a video about an earthquake. As soon as there's a volcano erupts, somebody's going to be telling you about a new volcano eruption. But not everybody heard about the Cinnabung eruption because why? Because mainstream didn't carry it. So if you weren't following some of these alternative news channels on YouTube, you wouldn't even know about any of this. <clears throat> but... The bottom line is, in inland Papua New Guinea is not a good place to be having earthquakes. The majority, the vast majority of earthquakes, 95, 98% of earthquakes, happen along the northern coast of New Guinea where there is a plate. The plate is slipping, but it's also subducting. So once in a while, you'll get some underwater earthquakes that cause tsunamis, and we will talk about that in new about new guinea because uh, many people don't know that thousands of people were killed by a tsunami in, in the late 1990s in new guinea because of what an underwater a landslide happening in probably a transition zone but you can see when you just look at the geography of indonesia new guinea this whole fire fire ring uh, this is the hottest spot on the Ring of Fire, and you can see um, Earth's origins can kind of be visualized just in this one frame. You can see along a plate, you see huge subsidence calderas. They call them seas or basins, but those are super mega calderas that have fed all these strata volcanoes, the hundreds of them, all along this boundary, this plate boundary. And there are, the Band C isn't the only super mega caldera you see. But what happens with super mega calderas, just much like the basin, you have intrusions, and then you have ridge building, and you have island building. And the whole Sierra Nevada is probably a ridge that formed in the Great Basin and separated the Sacramento Valley from the Great Basin. But this plays out all over the globe, this, uh, this pattern. This, so it speaks to Earth's origins uh, somewhat, um, but it also speaks to the future of New Guinea. New Guinea, although sparsely populated, uh, does, uh, within New Britain and, and Papua New Guinea, uh, you have thousands of people that live there, and you have major mining and oil and gas exploration, as well as production in New Guinea. What I want to do is kind of, you know, show you some things that come to light when we look at some of the um, volcanoes in New Guinea that have become active. The Bagana volcano uh, is one of the ones that we're tracking because they just reported an ash advisory over uh, New Guinea. Um, and it's mainland, not out on the ocean like most of these volcanoes that erupt are. Um, here are the volcanoes 
of New Guinea. There's 67 of them. There's more. They're not counting. There's vent holes. There's all kinds of stuff going on. Uh, hot springs. Uh, but you see the ones in bold. Uh, the Admiralty Islands, Northeast New Guinea, New Ireland, New Britain, New Guinea itself, the Solomon Province, that have dogged uh, airline flights throughout Indonesia and throughout this area. The, um, but if you, what I like is to look at the history of these volcanoes. What you're seeing is an increase in activity when you look at the history. Some of these were classified as intermittent, now classified as ongoing eruption. Well, when one volcano goes from ongoing to from from intermittent to ongoing, it, it might raise an eyebrow, but how many volcanoes are intermittent and are now ongoing? That's the million dollar question. Um, but I mean, I could show you three or four right now. And many people on the threads can point out probably more. The other volcanoes, most of them off, off this um, plate boundary, um, are explosive. They're, they cap themselves off and then they explode to life. And um, the manum are now ongoing. Some were dormant, came out of dormancy. The same patterns are being played out all over the globe. And uh, we can argue about why, 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 why? But the bottom line is it's happening and you need to know it's happening and you need to know it ties in with everything else that's going on. You don't think it's separate? Uh, yeah, don't. It's all tied in to the fireballs. How can a volcano be tied to a fireball? It's, it's the same causative large body out in the solar system that is wreaking havoc. And as I scroll through some of these volcanoes that are now being reported with ash advisories, all of a sudden, I mean, three or four volcanoes along this chain, all of them, all of a sudden exploding at the same time. Some of them went from dormant, from dormancy, exploded. So uh, the Karkara volcano is another one, uh, it's a large one that they are keeping an eye on because they just had an ash report this week from that volcano. And it last erupted, they think, in 212 or 2014. So it's, it's hard to tell when there's a long string of volcanoes and something shoots out ash for a day and in cloud cover um, or steam vents. And it's hard to qu qualify that as an eruption. But so all of these became active roughly around the same time in 2018. And the Cinnabong has been an ongoing, not an ongoing, but a, a frequently intermittent volcano with very frequent interruptions, um, and much like all the other volcanoes. And this is happening all over the globe. It's happening in Central America, South America, Ecuador, Colombia, Guatemala. All of those countries down there have volcanoes, and they have volcanic eruptions. And what is really weird and freaking those people out in those countries is they've lived 40, 50 years and never saw one volcano eruption. Now, all of those countries I just mentioned, plus others, have double, sometimes three volcanoes erupting in that country at the same time. Langila eruption uh, hasn't erupted since 2013. Uh, now another ash advisory over Langila. Uh, I believe it lasted just for a day or two, but there, it's just all happening at the same time. So when you have a 7.5 magnitude earthquake underneath you know, dozens and dozens of, some of these are big strata volcanoes. When you have that going on, uh, you need to be aware. There's going to be more volcanic activity. Remember Bartabunga, um, the largest lava flow, lava field ever created on the planet Earth in modern day history. Um, you know, since some of those great volcanic epics like the Holocene, we were seeing huge, huge magma fields being produced. Um, and at the same time, all this other stuff is going on. So we think we know why. We think there's less ice on the land and more water in the oceans. When you do that, you create more weight and you start subsiding your basins. When you subside your basins, which probably all the evidence says these are super mega calderas, when somebody subsides a basin, you push your magma and you start creating intrusions and cracking. 
What's going on in New Guinea is heartbreaking. Uh, huge landslides have just carried it. Houses down the hill, major roads are wiped out, mining has come to a halt, gas exploration has come to a halt. They're trying to reach people that are trapped. They're still looking for survivals. survivors. The death toll is rising by the day. And still the uh, earth rumbles in the highlands. That's an unusual quake in the highlands. Most of these usually happen out in the ocean, um, out on that rift zone that's just north of New Guinea. So we're looking at probably another era of volcanism. We've just witnessed about 10 years of increased activity that has really blown my mind because I love volcanoes and I've been following volcanism my whole life. Um, I have relatives that live on the big island in Hawaii. I, I'm used to, from the third grade on, used to seeing Hawaiian newspaper articles regarding volcanoes. <clears throat> in Hawaii, Kilauea, Mauna Loa, volcanoes in Hawaii. So uh, until next time, you got to be aware of what's going on around you.